Absolutely. Um, something that's just coming up mm. to me is um, uh, is just about um, building authentic conversation and how important it is to say if you are assuming something, um, actually actually speaking out the assumption rather than rather than following the trail of the assumption actually speak, say um because of this action my mind is my mind is making up that this is happening is this true and inquiring the, the piece about saying is this true then the person's probably going to be like oh no not at all and then they say what the truth is yeah, I love that. It's actually getting into clear conversation, and because we do make assumptions at a, you know, a, we know that our brain works that way, and so actually slow it. That it slows down the conversation too. I imagine, Shelley, mm. when you're because yes. you're, you know, rather because we we make assumptions to kind of do a shortcut. You know, you say something, I make an assumption about what you mean, and then I go to the next thing. But if I'm, if I'm saying to you, well, Shelley, I'm assuming you mean this. That actually yes. slows down the conversation a yes. lot. Yes. Yes. And just yeah. asking to slow things down is also really effective because it shows that you're actually interested yeah. to go that level deeper. Yeah. And I think it also, I, I had an example actually um, um, of a potential conflict situation where I was, um, I was a bit peeved about something that had happened and I, I, I said, uh, I was talking to the person um, about what they had done, a decision they had made. And I, you know, and sometimes this is the problem. We ask a question, but we're really making a statement. And, uh, and I said something like, you know, um, why did you do A, B and C? But really what I was saying in my mind is, uh, I'm not happy about you doing A, B and C. I wasn't really, you know, but, but, but I, was, I was wanting to understand so there was a bit of that going on. And the other person said, um, I would rather you, you're more curious in, in that question um, because I feel like you're assuming this. So she mm. did that with me. And then I said, no, no, that's not my intention. I am curious because when I thought about it, it's like, no, I am curious. I do want to understand wh what went wrong. But if she hadn't done that, she would have assumed something that wasn't really my intention. And we would have had a conflict about that for sure, yes. 100%. But we evade, well, you know, avoided that con conflict yes. because we, because of this sort of just in the moment being a, a little bit cognizant of what is it that I'm getting from this. And because mm -hmm. we care about the relationship too, I think that she sort of slowed that down for me. And, we, and it was great. I loved being part of that conversation. What a wonderful learning mm -mm. opportunity. Yeah. I, have you heard of um, is it Malcolm McLuhan? And his thing is all nonviolent communication. So he's got a fabulous uh, YouTube. It's like a whole seminar that's on YouTube um, all about this. And he has these little puppets that he does I haven't on this, seen on it, this so. video. But it's, it's all about when we're trying to understand a situation better, communicating our needs and our feelings mm -mm. is all we can really do because anything else is, is an assumption. So don't assume anyone else's needs or feelings. Inquire, like you said, be curious or say what our feelings are about something that has occurred and allow that person to contribute whatever it is that, they, that they're feeling about what has occurred. Yeah, that's wonderful. I have, and I know I haven't, I don't think I've come across that. So um, again, fantastic resources here, we'll Shelley. So, so you're, you're, how, how far are you into your master's? Are you? Uh, so I've just finished the just... last module, <gasps> but I still have my thesis to okay. do. So my thesis, so through it, um, I've also been taking a business, uh, business accelerator program to develop a program. So I think the masters and the business accelerator have been quite complimentary because I've been able to really bring all of my learnings into a six step program. And then my thesis will scientifically test the effectiveness of this program to help people make the shift from loneliness to belonging. Although what I, what I thought I, I was really 
assuming that loneliness and belonging were like on a single continuum. And actually I had this epiphany and I'm like, oh, this is it. Has anyone else discovered this? But of course, because I've got access to all of the research and I'm like, oh, okay, a few people have, have also had this thought. But then as a, as a social science researcher, what I found so curious is you think that is totally correct. And then you stumble upon something else which felt even more right. And in this, in this more recent model, which was only introduced, I think in 2021, it's a loneliness and belonging um, quadrant. So there's A, B, C, and D. And in the D quadrant, it's socially indifferent. And then we've got socially distressed, socially searching, and then socially fulfilled. So I'm wanting to help people. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that most people that want to do my program are going to be socially searching. They're kind of ready, ready to go. They want to find their people. They want to feel connected. Um, but also curious to see if anyone, anyone joins it who is, who is maybe feeling like they're socially indifferent, feeling like they couldn't, don't mind either way. And imagine if I could help them to get to socially fulfilled and go, how can your life be improved now? And I really see Maslow's hierarchy of needs in this and belonging, belonging is there. Like that is going to help your esteem. That is going to help you go towards your, your life purpose, your goals, when you're surrounding yourself with people that you can be authentic with. Your work is with adults or with um, children and teenagers, because I know that this is something that teenagers uh, find uh, quite vexing and it's very important for them but is your are you are you sticking with that adult populations so in my I've done a research brief for my thesis which I still need to run through with my prof in that I've suggested starting from the age of 15 so I would love to I have approached a high school I'm going to speak I'm going to see one of them on yeah. Saturday to see if I could do do ha have a group of them from high school wouldn't that be wonderful be so valuable mm. I, I was talking to my nephew um a while back and he's just started high school so so he's in year seven so in Australia that's the first year of, of sort of secondary school which is a so big transition yeah it's a really big transition and and uh he was finding it a bit difficult with his because uh, he had formed a friendship group and that dissolved and um so he was finding i think you know in terms of his sense of belonging to a tribe and belonging to even you know even the the identity with the school he wasn't feeling it because of that dissolution of this friendship group and i said to him uh, well, you just haven't found your people yet. You know, maybe it's not them, but you know, there'll be others. And then I explained to him that, you know, I had that that experience when I was younger too. I didn't really. I felt like I was searching for my people, you know, through high school as well. I didn't really find them until I was, you know, in university. And he was surprised by that. And um, I'm hoping that that gave him a little bit of optimism in a way, because mm. I, I feel like he, he, you know, I'm sort of a role model in his life. And I feel like he would never have guessed that I had that sense of, you know, that I felt the same as he did at his age, mm. you know, that I had that sense of loneliness. And I was, I was very much a seeker, I would have been a seeker on your quadrant. I think I still am. I think a lot of what I do is I'm always searching for, you know, different, um, different communities to be involved in. And like you, I create communities <laughs> just to make that happen. Um, yeah. But yeah, but um, but often it, the instigators is hard for the instigators because you go, you put all this effort in, you go and you create this beautiful shared experience, and then you go back and you're like, oh, everything's quiet. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there's something about holding a space too that you don't experience it in the same way as participants because mm. you're holding the space. So yeah, I, I, I kind of you know, there's a bit of a <laughs> trade off there. But I'm so glad you're doing this work with younger people too, because I think that there's a real need there. I'm, I I would be fascinated too to see the differences. So yes. I wish you well with that. Although it is a master's, Thank so you. you need to, you need to kind of define the scope so that it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't become a huge and too, uh, you know, too big 
uh, for you to to handle and manage. Yeah, it? the feedback that I initially had from my research brief was, "This is a PhD. Uh, yeah, it needs to be scaled back a little bit." I'm like, "Oh, okay. I'll be happy to carry on and do a PhD if the funding's there. I'll uh, <laughs> That's right. I'll take it." But one of the biggest learnings that I would love to share is is from um, an anthropologist named Dr. Robin Dunbar, and he came up with something called Dunbar's number uh, many moons ago. And the biggest learning, I had him on my podcast and really said to him, what is the key part of this? Because in his theory, our brains can only hold 150 people in our consciousness at any one time, which that sounds like a lot of people. But then if we think about all of the people on on our different social media channels, that would add up to many more than 150. Yeah. So if we're giving kind of love and attention to people on our social media channels who aren't in our 150, we're diluting ourselves and not giving that to the people that are. So in the work that I do, I really help people to, to kind of map their communities, starting very much on the inside, which is your first five, five to 15 people. And, and, and oh, that wonderful. is really the key. And I think especially for, for, for you know, high school kids, yeah. really start, start, just think of your five. Who's your five? Yeah. And nurturing start that. really, yeah. really small and nurture that. Because we don't need that many people in our circles to really feel that sense of belonging. But they have yeah. to be the right people. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I wanted to mention your podcast, Shelley. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so it's called Rediscovering Connection. Um, I'm, I think I've just filmed um, episode 15 and it's, it's been a real journey. I've, half the people I already knew from one realm of life or another, and then some of them were recommended to me. And then about four of them were people that I'd never met before the podcast. So for me, it's been a real journey to rediscover connection with with lots of different people and then we really talk about the the pivotal individuals and communities that have played a part in shaping shaping their journey and most of the people that I'm speaking to really have discovered their purpose and they're really feeling like they're on that track so I really want to find out how they've how they've like made that leap um, to hopefully inspire other people who are like almost getting to that point, but maybe they maybe they need to join an, a community that's going to resonate with them or to start watching out for the clues in their path of life to take them in the right direction. Oh, that's wonderful. So there's that as well. And and I'm I'm um I'm ke- I didn't realize that you'd interviewed Robin Dunbar, so I'm interested to hear that episode. Yes. That would be fascinating. So he gave me like three hours oh, of his wow. time. So I actually broke it down into two. There's one which is the science of happiness and then there's another one which is um basically connection in, in the workplace. Great. Fantastic. Well, yeah, we'll definitely it was in- put it was a huge honor, huge honor. Wonderful. Like Isn't I it? feel, I feel like before before I'd spoken to him, I was already talking about his work. But afterwards, I just feel in so much more integrity to actually say it because I've really felt it in that conversation. And I don't know about you, but my podcast journey has been unreal in that respect. Like I feel like I'm learning and growing so much with every conversation. Yeah. And actually, like but like you said, we we felt a real connection. And one of my one of my guests um I'd never met before. And then we met just a couple of weeks after our podcast. And the feeling of meeting her at a big oh, it, it was at the Disrupt HR event oh, that I, okay. to, that I Wonderful. met her that you're going to be hosting yes. in Brisbane. Yeah. And we were both just like like it felt incredible incredible like ridiculously over the top good to actually meet in person so I don't know what it is but this podcasting is magical and I honestly don't know why everyone isn't doing it (laughs) well I I I agree I think it's really wonderful it's a it's such a lovely um space that you create for yourself and others to have really deep conversations and I think that's why it's it's popular you know I go back to um my partner's actually been listening to some old radio uh, shows. Do you remember the Twilight Zone? 
Oh, it rings in the, a bell. It's in the in the eighties. I think in the eighties and nineties they did the Twilight. In the eighties they did it as a radio show, and then they did it on TV. I think in the nineties. And he's been going back to it. Just it's their stories, their fictions. And mm. I and I was sort of commenting with him. I'm saying a lot. A lot of us said, "Isn't it interesting how in 2023, 2022, we've suddenly gone back to just listening." You know, I mean, I know that there's a visual element to, for example, we're videoing this conversation as well, but the the rise of, you know, popularity of podcasting is about just listening, listening to other yes. people have conversations or tell a story. It's it's as old as time that that, you know, that practice. It's yes. and it's wonderful. And you think how much more we're able to learn absolutely through listening to podcasts than just watching a fiction show yeah. on Netflix, that's for instance. Right. Yeah, exactly. We're growing as individuals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's wonderful. Um, well, Shelley, this has been a wonderful conversation. We're running out of time, but I wanted to just check in with you. Is there anything that maybe I haven't asked you that you wanted to share? Just anything else before we go? Um, maybe I could just share some of the obstacles that stop us from connecting. Great. Yes, let's do right? that. Okay, so um, thinking that people have already got all of their friends and connections and they probably don't have any space for me. Um, if people keep coming to mind, then I would just encourage people to just follow the clues. If people just keep dropping in, if one person just keep, you're like, I haven't seen them or spoken to them for like five years. Why do they keep dropping in? Just listen to the call and follow the trail. Love that. Um, social media, love it, love it or hate it. Um, it is consuming our time. So I think studies are saying that we're spending about three hours a day on social media and 27 minutes a day on average with our friends. Oh, wow. Um, so uh, just, just, I would just encourage people to watch themselves if they're feeling that call for connection and then they go on social media, get distracted scroll for a bit and then forget why they went on there in the first place doing the work to figure out who is in your 12 to 15 people and then when that feeling of I want a bit of connection comes over you or a niggle of loneliness comes over you how about reaching out to to some of these people instead of going on social media and just start to nurture send a couple of audio notes um do a bit of self-care before get into your vibe um, and yeah, really just nurture your people and just to remember how precious they are and remember how beautiful it feels to get a real personal message from one of your dearest beloved friends and then how precious it would be for them to receive it of you. They, I love that list, Shelley. That's wonderful. Even if we, even if we had just done that, I think it's fabulous. I love that, and uh, and I I absolutely agree with that that last point. Those those precious things that you know, I'm I'm the thing that I do, for example, particularly around this time, Christmas. I put a lot of effort into cards and writing cards because gifts are. I can give a gift, but it's that time that I spend handwriting. You're know, choosing a card and then handwriting a card, and a lot of my friends and family they always comment on that. And um, I, and hope I mean I keep all my cards because I love to go through them and remind myself of the lovely messages that people have written. It's those. It's very low fi isn't it? It's not. It's not high That's fi it. at all. Mm -hmm. it's beautiful but it's your time yeah. Josephine yeah. and and that's it and that is so precious like that's our one resource which is finite yes yeah absolutely yeah fantastic I am planning to be in Australia in February so yes. if you do have any HR chums that are looking for an innovative workshop for their organization or they want and support with uh, an employee program for any recruits, then please drop me a line. Yes. Shelley, what dates are you in Australia and whereabouts um, will you be? We've got February just marked out okay. and we're gonna be we're gonna be going to New Zealand um, to Taranga and then to Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney. Great. All right, fantastic. So yeah, we'll we'll, um, we'll definitely put, spread the word about that as well. Thank, thank you thank so you. much, Shelley. It's been such a pleasure, and um, I know we'll be talking again. So we'll see you soon. Thank you.